today we are going to talk about Zimbabwe. We are going to talk about Zimbabwe. This is after some of my Central Africa region uh, viewers requested that if I know anything about that region, then I talk. So today we are going to talk about Zimbabwe. What is Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe, there is a... For those who come from Kenya, you know about Gede, Gede Runes. So there are some historical village somewhere in that area, in that country, that were named Zimbabwe. So when the country became independent, they decided to use that because the country was known for Zimbabwe historical sites. Just like if Kenya, when Kenya attained independence, it was possible for the country to be called Gede. Gede. Because you find that uh, Zimbabwe, there are those historical towns that used to be called Zimbabwe. So they decided to call it Zimbabwe. During colonial time, there was a confederation of Central African republics uh, which were composed of Nyasaland, Northern Rhodesia, and Southern Rhodesia. Nyasaland, when it became independent, it became a country known as Malawi under Dr. Kamuzu Banda, Hasting Kamuzu Banda. We may talk about it later. Northern Rhodesia, when it became independent, uh, it became independent and was called Zambia under Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, for those of you who know, a safari suit called Kaunda suit, it was named after him. Southern Rhodesia, you know, when Northern Rhodesia attained independence, it changed its name to Zambia. So Southern Rhodesia found that it could not be called Southern Rhodesia when there is no Northern Rhodesia. So it changed its name from Southern Rhodesia to just Rhodesia. Then later, upon independence, it changed its name to Zimbabwe. I've told you the meaning of Zimbabwe. Rhodesia, the two countries of Rhodesia, that is Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia, were named after Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes was a, a British explorer. So, just like uh, any country is named after a person, then uh, uh, the, those two countries were named after Rhodes. So it is Rhodesia. In 1964, the then Prime Minister for Rhodesia, Mr. Ian Smith, declared a UDI. UDI, which means Unilateral Declaration of Independence. If you see other countries which were British colony, uh, the, the British came and handed over the uh, running of the country to indigenous people. Now, Rhodesia was the only country that declared unilateral declaration of independence, UDI. And who are these people who declared themselves independent? They were not even the natives of that country. It is just that it was these British 
who were settlers there, and they declared that Rhodesia is an independent country under a prime minister called Ian Smith. No country, uh, no country recognized that independence. So Africans from Rhodesia started a freedom fighting there. After a long fight, uh, and Ian Smith saw that there was going to be no way that he would continue, he pulled together uh, some Africans to join his government. Among those who joined him was one Bishop Abel Muzorewa. So Bishop uh, Abel Muzorewa became a co-prime minister with Ian Smith. But if we go into reality, you know who was the real prime minister. And the other ones continued fighting for independence. It became attainable. I mean, when Abel Mosorewa and Ian Smith joined together, they renamed the country. They renamed the country to uh, Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. Now, the two prime ministers, the two co prime ministers, of Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, were Ian Smith and Bishop Abel Muzorewa. But freedom fighters still continued fighting. They continued fighting for a long time until it was untenable for that short-lived Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. And so there was a, a, there was a push for the country to be independent. And uh, they held their peace talks in Lancaster House in London. For Kenyans, you know Lancaster House. It is the same house that Kenyans had also pushed for independence there. So they held uh, there. And you see, other African leaders treated uh, Abel Muzorewa as one of the British, so he became alienated from his fellow freedom fighters. We had a party called ZANU. ZANU, if you can recall, when Africans were going to get independence, they used to like uh, parties that were called ANU. In Kenya, we had KANU. In Tanzania, we had Tanu, and so on and so on. So in, in uh, Rhodesia, we had ZANU. ZANU, which stood for Zimbabwe African National Union. But you'll find that just like our Ford, which had Ford Mudidi and Ford Ajip, which turned into Ford Asili and Ford Kenya, the ZANU was divided into two. Actually, the original boss for ZANU was Robert Mugabe. But Robert Mugabe was jailed for a long time by Ian Smith. And when he was in jail, Reverend Dambaninki Sithole took over that party to be its head. So when Robert Mugabe was released from jail, he wanted back his party. Just like Jomo Kenyatta when he came from uh, London, James Gichuru handed over the Kenya African Union Party to Jomo Kenyatta. But when Robert Mugabe came out of jail, he wanted back his party called ZANU, but Reverend Dambaninki Sidhole was not ready to hand over the party. So it broke into two. And for a long time, uh, the party was being called uh, the wing of Reverend Dambaniki Sidode and the wing for Robert Mugabe. Robert Mugabe became a very educated person because when he was in jail, 
he took edu- he started studying and got so many uh, degrees from behind bar so that is how the, the the party broke into two we had another party headed by Joshua Komo the party headed by Joshua Komo was called Zapu Zapu was Zimbabwe African People's Union Zimbabwe African People's Union now if we have to go into reality and if we have to go with whatever was happening Joshua Nkomo would have been the first ruler of Zimbabwe. But in Africa, you'll see that apart from Uganda, you know Uganda, if you come from a big tribe, it is very hard for you to rule. Those people who rule come from small tribes. But in most African countries, it is almost impossible to rule if you come from some of these small tribes. So the only reason that Joshua Nkomo never ruled is because he came from a small tribe. And that one came during the the independent election. You see now we vote tribally. Since we vote tribally, Joshua Nkomo came from a small tribe and Robert Mugabe came from a big tribe. But uh, when these people were having uh the Lancaster talks, Dambaningi Sidole went with his Zanu and Mugabe also went with his Zanu. Now the Zanu wing that belonged to Robert Mugabe uh, ganged up with Joshua Nkomo's Zapu and they formed a coalition. You Kenyans, you think coalition started with you, eh? I, many Kenyans think that... Uh, uh, the coalition started in 2002, but it started long ago, where Robert Mugabe's wing of ZANU and Joshua Nkomo's ZAPU joined together, and they used to go to Lancaster Conference as Patriotic Front. As Patriotic Front. And Patriotic Front, the leader of the Patriotic Front coalition was Joshua Nkomo. And Robert Mugabe was the deputy or the vice president of ZANU, of, of uh, Patriotic Front. Now, when he was the deputy, he changed his party and called it ZANU PF, ZANU Patriotic Front. So Joshua Nkomo was pushing for that uh, the two parties, ZAPU and ZANU PF, be joined together. Uh, I don't know what term I can say that, but uh, they cease existing and form a new party called ZANU PF. For those of you who are in Kenya, it's like uh, URP and uh, Jubilee Party when they join, where uh, Uhuru's party and uh, URP joined together. A TNA, yeah. The way TNA and URP joined together and formed Jubilee Party. That is how Joshua Nkomo wanted it to be. But Robert Mugabe knew that if if, if they went that way, then uh, he would automatically be the deputy to Joshua Nkomo and he refused. So whenever they used to go London to London for a Lancaster talk, it was Joshua Nkomo who used to head the uh, ZANU, uh, no, the Patriotic Front. But once it was said that they were now going to have, uh, when they were now going to have independent in the campaigns for, in the campaigns for election, uh, Robert Mugabe refused to fold up his party you know when they when they started calling themselves the Patriotic Front, Joshua Nkomo stopped calling himself as the leader of uh, ZAP, and he always uh, talked of himself as the leader of Patriotic Front. But once the Lancaster Agreement was there and it was agreed 
that uh, it was agreed that uh, they now go and campaign for independent elections. Uh, Robert Mugabe reverted back to ZANU-PF and they held their elections. When they held the elections, of course he came from a big tribe uh, and then his party won most of the seats and when it won most of the seats, it formed the government. And when it formed the government, uh, it formed the government with a ceremonial president. And who was this ceremonial president? He was Reverend Canon Banana. And Robert Gabriel Mugabe became the prime minister. They stayed there for a long time. And then he had to change the constitution, uh, amalgamating the position of prime minister and the president. So when that... Uh, a constitution change was effected. Of course, the 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 papers were taken to state house, where Canon Banana signed into law, stating that in the future, after the next election, the the person who is going to be the leader of a majority in parliament is going to be the president. And the Zimbabwean. Uh, newspapers said, of course they knew the, uh, the, the historical facts at that time, they said that uh, President Kanan Banana has signed, his, uh, j j has signed uh, himself, his job into extinct. And that is how uh, Zimbabwe became that way. Uh, next we will talk about another country probably in that region. Thank you.